Today I want to take you on a quick tour of the new interface in Revit Architecture 2010. One of the first things you'll notice is that the recent files screen has changed, but let's go into the program itself. One of the first things that you'll notice is that the design bar has been completely replaced with the new ribbon bar interface. The ribbon bar interface, which first showed up in the Office 2007 products, is now, of course, the interface that we've also seen in uh, AutoCAD 2009. Part of the idea of the ribbon bar interface is that it can be minimized so that it takes up much less of the screen. So for example, I can reduce it down so that now all I see are the individual panels on the Home tab, or I can even minimize it further. And now I have to click on a particular panel to make it become visible. Let's look at this ribbon bar interface in a little bit more detail. You'll notice that there's a number of different tabs. Most of the tools that were formerly on the basic design bar and the modeling design bar in Revit are now on the home bar. In addition, we have insert, where you'll find tools for inserting other files. Annotate, which is where you'll find the tools for most of the things that you'll want to do to annotate, including the detail drawing tools. Modify, where you'll find the tools for modifying the model. So I think you're going to be switching back and forth between the home panel and the modify panel quite a bit. Massing and site is where you'll find all the massing and site tools. Collaborate, which is where you'll find copy monitor, coordination review, interference check, work set, things of that nature. The view panel, which we will find ourselves going to quite often, and finally, manage. Notice that when you select a tool, so for example, if I hover over the wall tool, notice first of all that I get a tool tip, and that tool tip now expands out to give me a lot more information about the command itself. When I start the wall tool, at that point Revit behaves much the way it did in all previous releases, but the options bar has changed significantly. The first thing you'll notice here is that I can go immediately to the instance properties or the type properties. So I can jump right to my type properties dialog. So that's nice. I don't have to make multiple clicks to get there. Another thing you'll notice is that the type selector has been replaced with this new drop-down, and the drop-down shows me a graphic image of what that wall type is. So we're no longer going to have a situation of having to select the wall type based only on the written description that we saw in the type selector. Now we get this graphic preview of that wall. Once I select the wall, the tools that I used for defining or drawing that wall that used to be in my options bar now show up here in my place wall panel. But the other things that were in the options bar, such as controlling the height, the location of the wall, whether I'm creating a chain of walls, whether I'm offsetting, and if I'm drawing a curved wall, the radius still appear there on my options bar. And when I start to draw, the program still works exactly the way it did in previous versions. Not a very exciting building. When I'm finished, if I click on the Modify tool, I go right back to my home panel. And now if I want to insert a door, it works the same way. And again, I can see the various doors that are loaded, get a graphic, select the door. But then inserting the door works exactly the way it did in previous releases. One thing that may not be immediately obvious are some of the tools that we used to go directly to the toolbars to control. For example, if I want to switch to a 3D view, I now, on my quick select toolbar, I now have tools for selecting my default 3D view, setting up a camera view, creating a walkthrough. So if I want to go to my default 3D view, I just click on that and I'm immediately in 3D mode. And of course, in 2009, we got the addition of the view cube, so we can 
pivot around on the view cube and we now have quick access to the navigation wheel and also our zoom tool. So if I want to do a zoom window, I can select that and quickly do a zoom region. But you know, you're probably going to use the shortcut menus and also for rotating, I still like the middle mouse button in conjunction with the shift key. Where things get interesting is when you want to switch views because we no longer have a window pull down because we have no pull down menus. In order to switch views, I can do a control tab or I can go to my view panel and here is where I can switch windows. And notice that on my view panel I can also close hidden views, replicate views, cascade, and tile. Where it gets interesting is when I have multiple projects open. So let's come down here and open up some other project. So when another project is open, again to switch windows, we just come in and select it from the view panel of the ribbon bar. To get back to my recent files screen, I need to come over here to my user interface pull down and I need to turn the recent files panel on. Once the recent files panel is on, then when I click on switch windows, I can switch between any of my open projects or go back to my recent files panel. So I hope you'll see that the new ribbon bar in Revit two, Architecture 2010 and indeed in all of the new uh, Revit 2010 products, while it replaces the design bar and you may spend a little bit of time wondering where all your commands went initially, it's a pretty intuitive interface. It's really a lot cleaner than that design bar. It's made to be minimized and get out of your way. And I hope you're able to learn it. It's taken me about an hour to get used to it. And then once you're used to it, go back to doing productive work in Revit. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.